The Durango and Silverton Railroad is located in the southwest corner of Colorado in the USA. It is a former mine railroad, but today it is a scenic railway offering unique views of the Colorado countryside. Twice a year, the railroad offers people the opportunity to photograph the train from locations not available to the normal passenger. In February and September, it offers what they call photographer's train journeys. On these trips, passengers have the opportunity to disembark at specially selected locations and photograph or film the train as it performs several runbys. It is a full day, starting before daylight, but with the offer and donuts and as much soft drinks as you can manage throughout the journey. There is also a packed lunch included in the price. The journey starts in the centre of Durango and heads north out of town along a valley plain. Soon, however, the gradient increases as it heads up the Animus Valley. From the 1980s to the present day, the owners have built on the scenic tourist industry. Scheduling of trains has increased, as well as a major overhaul of the tracks. Today, the railroad provides a year-round train service operating historical carriages and rolling stock. All the trains are 100% coal-fired, steam-operated. The railroad has had a chequered history from its beginnings. Originating in 1880, it was used to transport gold and silver oil from the San Juan Mountains to Durango. Following World War I, the mines closed and the rise in the use of the automobile caused the railroad to close temporarily. After World War II, the line reopened to assist in the processing of uranium. Subsequent to that, it was often used as a backdrop to many films. This is the buffet car I was talking about earlier, where you can get free drinks throughout the day. You can also walk through the train freely, standing between carriages, leaning out the windows, and there are even a couple of gondola cars where there are no windows, so you can lean right out and get a panoramic view. For the photographer's train, though, you have to sign your life away with a disclaimer form before you travel. This is what is called a run-by. We all disembark from the train, the train reverses and then comes forward so we can all get the pictures we want. It does this two or three times at each location so there is plenty of chance to get a good image. Here's another one of those run bars. Unfortunately, I can't get everybody out of the picture. You can probably see the pink tape in some of the shots where people are asked to stand behind. But even so, it doesn't prevent people getting in the way. Did you hear somebody say quiet please? 
that was me. The majority of people on this train were still photographers, not video photographers. So they didn't understand that we want quiet when the train comes by. It took a while, but eventually they got the message. shot taken from the front of the train. I asked the engineer if I could attach one of my GoPros to the engine. And after looking at me a bit funny, he said, yeah, go ahead. I tried to attach it as hard as I could, but after about half an hour, it toppled over, and all I got was uh, pictures of the uh, engine, nothing at all. But for the first few minutes, I did get quite a good shot. This is the last shot of the day. As you can see, it's very picturesque. There's a place called the High Line. This is the last place we do a run by. We had to make sure we got out on the correct side of the train as we're getting out on the wrong side, a couple of hundred feet down into the canyon. So we all scrambled out, up onto the embankment, and the train did a few run bys, spraying steam into the canyon. And uh, you can get a rainbow effect if you're lucky. Anyway, a good day days in my case was had by all. I might go back there sometime in the future when I can save up enough money.